Alright, question 29 to 33 in the Acer red paper. Question 29. Which of the following will take place if Br2 is added to a solution that contains chlorine and iodine ions? Alright, so um, in this sort of redox reaction type question, uh, we'll always get a table with half reactions, and the half reactions will always be proceeding in the same manner, and that is with um, sort of electrons on the left-hand side and the reduced form on the right. So that's the form that always give it to us. But that's not the form that um, necessarily we always need to be able to answer the question. So um, in this instance, um, for chlorine and iodine in particular, we actually have to reverse this half reaction. And that's for two reasons. In one, firstly, um, they've given us the chlorine ions and um, iodine ions uh, in the question. So we start with these, so therefore they have to be on the left-hand side. And secondly, um, in a redox reaction, there always has to be um, uh, ions that are uh, giving off electrons and ions that are, uh, sorry, species that are giving off electrons and species that are taking electrons. So it's a reduction and oxidation reaction, not just reduction. Okay, so um, we are to get these sort of half reactions into the right form for chlorine and iodine. Um, we have to reverse them. So we go um, now with the uh, I, uh, with the ion on the left hand side. Um, we have this half reaction, and the standard reduction potential now becomes negative one point three six. Um, and similarly for the iodine, we get a standard reduction potential of negative zero point five four from uh, zero point five four. All right, excellent. So um, we have bromine reacting with um, each of these two. Um, species and for a, re a redox reaction to occur um, when you add the individual uh, standard reduction potentials of each half reaction um, if you add them together and the total um, standard reduction potential uh, is over zero um, then redox will occur um, so if you add those two half reaction standard reduction potentials then um, the total must be over zero for re redox to occur so let's try that for um, chlorine and bromine. Uh, we get negative uh, 1.36 plus 1.07. So um, that's going to result in a negative uh, uh, standard reaction potential total. Uh, so that means there will be no redox reaction. Um, there will be no interaction at all between bromine and um, a chlorine ion. Um, but on the other hand, with iodine, um, there will be a reaction um, because the uh, standard reaction potential total will be over uh, zero and therefore um, since this is the uh, this is a reaction that half reaction that will occur um, we can say that iodine um, as it is uh, releasing two electrons uh, it will be oxidized because that's one of the definitions of um, oxidation uh, the loss of electrons so therefore the correct answer for question 29 is C Sorry, B. Mm. Onwards to question 30. Um, 30. Question 30 is fairly similar to question 29. Uh, so basically, you pretty much just solve it as you did before, except for three new species. Um, uh, but instead this time we're uh, reducing H plus, so hydrogen ion, to H2. Um, so the primary uh, half reaction that sort of works in this scenario is the zinc one. So if we start with this as the zinc half reaction, um, <clears throat> it has a uh, standard reduction potential of negative 0.76. And when you reverse that, um, same reduction potential, we get 0.76, so a positive number. Um, and since we've got um, these two, we've got a forward and a backwards uh, reaction, thus making it a redox reaction. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when once we add the standard reduction potentials um, of the two individual half reactions, we'll notice that the total standard reduction potential is over zero. So therefore, um, this reaction Will proceed this uh, therefore meaning that zinc will um, 
result in the reduction of uh, hydrogen ions. Um, so uh, if you do this for all the other species, you'll find that only zinc does this, um, and therefore the correct answer is C. Question 31. Based on table 2, which of the following is the strongest reducing agent? So a reducing agent is a substance which produces, which sorry, causes um, reduction, but is itself oxidized. All right, so um, if we had a look at table two, um, all the reducing agents are located on the right-hand side of the half reaction uh, because the reducing agents are oxidized. Um, to figure out the strength of the reducing agent, I kind of just um, almost just memorized um, just a general rule, and that is this, that if you go down the right-hand side of the uh, half reaction table, um, you will see an increase in strength of uh, of reducing agent. All right, so um, you can say that uh, water in this case, since at the top on the right hand side, top right hand side, it is the weakest uh, reducing agent, and um, in this case, ethanol is the strongest reducing agent. All right, um, and conversely, if you go up the left hand side. Um, you'll see an increase in the strength of um, the oxidizing agent. So, um, agent. All right. So, um, this would be the uh, weakest oxidizing agent, whilst um, oxygen is the most, uh, it has the strongest oxidizing agent capabilities. So, um, for this question, the correct answer is D that ethanol is the strongest reducing agent. So question 32, um, basically we're given a formula and we're asked to calculate the value of KEQ for that reaction. Um, so basically to answer this question, you'll need to understand how to uh, figure out the number of moles being transferred in the reaction. Um, so it's, it's honestly pretty simple. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to figure out the um, individual half, half reactions and the number of um, moles being either ox like released from the half reaction or um, absorbed or taken in by the half reaction. So um, in this case, we've got this whole redox reaction here, um, and these are each of the individual half half reactions. Um, so in this instance, um, uh, ethanol is running backwards, and it is uh, releasing two uh, two electrons in the process, so it's being oxidized and um, oxygen is being reduced. Um, so overall in this redox reaction uh, we are transferring two electrons from the um, from the ethanol to the oxygen molecule. Um, so from that we can conclude that the value of n is equal to 2 because two moles of electrons are being transferred in the reaction um, and from the stem, we also know that the standard reduction potential of the cell is equal to 1.02. Um, and from there, it's just a simple sub-in. So you basically sub in all the values, um, run it through, you get 1.02 on 0.03 is equal to log 10 of KEQ. Um, and that equals to 34 is equal to log 10 of KEQ. And KEQ is equal to 10 to the power of 34. So therefore, D is the correct answer. All right, question 33. Um, basically, we're given two half reactions, um, and they each have the magnitude of the standard electrode potential of the two organic molecules, but not the sign. So basically, for, say, N, um, the we know that the standard electrode potential has a magnitude of 0.34, but we don't know whether that's positive 0.34 or negative 0.34, and we're going to try and figure that out. So um, an important thing to understand slash have memorize before you come into this question is that the standard hydrogen electrode has a, um, a E value of zero. All right. All right. So um, from the last part of the stem, we're told that the um, two half cells um, connecting M and the standard hydrogen, hydro, hydrogen electrode um, result in electrons flowing from the M half cell to the SHE. Um, so if the, if electrons are flowing from the M half cell to the SHE, we therefore know that the, um, M half reaction is running in this direction. 
Um, so it's giving off electrons, okay? So in this direction, it's giving off electrons. In this direction, we're taking electrons, all right? So, so we're, we're, we're look, we're definitely, we definitely have M running in this direction. Um, and since we know that the standard hydrogen electrode um, has an E value of zero and that the total E value um, for the redox reaction must be greater than zero for any electrons to be flowing. Um, therefore, we know that this, uh, the E value for this must equal to, uh, it must be a positive number, all right? So um, in this direction, the E value is going to be equal to um, 0.26, right? But this is the backwards direction. So we've got to reverse it to present it in the form that's on the table. So we can say that, um, m plus 2e minus goes to m2 minus, um, we know that the e value must be negative 0.26 because we've reversed that direction from here, okay? So um, we know for certain that the m half cell is negative 0.26. All right, so now to find the, um, the sign for the standard electropotential of the n half cell. Um, so from the stem, again, we know that electrons are flowing from the M to the N half cell. So therefore the M half cell must be running in this direction again. Um, so we can say that in the redox reaction involving M and M, M is going this way. Um, and therefore the E value is going to be o, uh, 0.26. Um, so since we know that the E total um, is equal to the each of the individual E half cells, we can say that it's going to be equal to 0 0.26 plus, um, plus 0.34, but we don't know whether this is a positive or a negative 0.34. Um, however, we can sort of just figure that, that out immediately because we know that um, the value of uh, the total E value has to be greater than zero. So um, therefore this uh, 0.34 cannot be negative 0.34, it must be positive because if it was negative, then the overall E total would be um, negative uh, 0.8. But um, if it was a positive value, then the overall um, E total would be 0.6 volts, all right? So therefore we know for certain that the um, N half cell must be positive 0.34. Um, so if I just fill it back in here, just to make it a little bit clearer. <clears throat> and then positive 0.34, all right? Um, so, so yeah, that's basically how you solve it. I mean, we've kind of figured out the total, uh, e e the total standard electropotential um, in just this part, it's 0 0.6, so the answer is uh, A. Um, but if you're a bit confused about um, sort of how I came to that conclusion, just go through um, go through the half reactions now that they're sort of in this order and try and um, try and see exactly why this has to occur. Like there's no other possibility for this to occur because um, if this, for example, is below, um, if N is below M, then that means that um, N would be giving up electrons um, in order to make the uh, redox reaction work, but that's not true because N is actually taking the electrons and M is giving out the electrons, so M has to be below N. Um, yeah, just sort of work through it and you'll sort of see that uh, pattern emerge.